Yo, this is how you make Korean rolled omelets. First, we're gonna need about four eggs. Boom. Pop. Another one. Now whisk that join up. Cut up some onions. And some carrot. And some scallion. Now throw your vegetable in your egg. Boom. Bop. Bop. You see how pretty it is aesthetically? White, green, and orange. And yellow. Salt to taste. Pepper to taste. Low heat. Splash of oil. Spread that joint out. We're gonna lightly pour the eggs. Spread that joint evenly. Just like that. When it's about 60% done, roll your egg over. And again, just like that. Flatten it out again. Boom. Okay, everyone, if you've never added brie to soup before, now's the time to start, and here's how to do it. Because brie is so high in lactose, it's ooey gooey, buttery by nature, you can add it into soup without chopping it up, grating it, or even taking off the skin. I'm going to take one quarter of this brie wheel and add it into a soup that I made, the base of pureed potatoes and cream, nothing fancy. And again, we're gonna pop that quarter of brie right in there, give it a little stir, let it cook for a couple minutes. Actually, maybe give it a couple more minutes, and after that, try and fish out the quarter wheel of brie, you'll see the cheese is melting right off the rind. After another minute or so, the cheese will have melted completely, you can remove the rind, give the soup a final stir, and you have this creamy, delicious soup that is extra comforting thanks to the brie. Alright y'all, video number two, we got shrimp tacos. If y'all ready, let's go. All right, y'all wanna cut the cabbage, cut some tomatoes, cut some red onions, cilantro, lime juice all over that, and mix it all up. You gonna need all these right here and mix it up with the shrimp. All right, start cooking the shrimp on medium high heat. Add these two sauces and add some red crushed pepper. Right here, we got a flying bay, but don't burn yourself if you do this. Get some garlic, some lime juice, and reduce the heat. And that's it for the shrimp. Tell me that shit don't look good. All right, all you gotta do now is start building your taco. Do not sleep on this one. It's bomb, believe me. I hope y'all enjoying the series so far. We got a lot of bomb tacos coming up, so stay posted. So this tortilla hack has been buzzing all around social media. I'm gonna give it a shot, but with a little breakfast twist. Take some diced bacon and render the fat until it's nice and crispy. Then we're gonna reserve some of that bacon grease and coat a frying pan with it. Take a couple beaten eggs and evenly distribute to create a base layer. Now take your tortilla, bind it to the top of the eggs, and give it a quick flip. Instead of splitting up my ingredients into quadrants, I'm using cheddar and bacon all around. The cut and the fold are still the same. The cheddar is just acting as glue so that none of those little bacon bits fall out of the wrap. And since I used the frying pan, the outside had a really nice crunch on it. And at the end of this, you have a bacon, egg, and cheese, whatever you want to call this. It kind of reminds me of a crunch wrap from Taco Bell, although comparing any home-cooked food to Taco Bell kind of makes me want to punch myself in the face. I made a seafood bowl for Christmas, and I made this butter sauce, which was a hit. Here is the recipe. One tablespoon of oregano, one teaspoon of thyme, one tablespoon of paprika, one and a half tablespoons of garlic powder, two teaspoons of onion powder, two tablespoons of brown sugar, slap your mama seasoning, two tablespoons of that, black pepper, combine everything together in a pan, five sticks of clarified butter, add the seasoning, add chopped red onions, a medium sized one, a whole head of garlic cloves, and lime leaves. It is divine. These were so easy to make. Let me show you how I made them and I'll link who I got the recipe from in the comments. All you need is four cups of flour, one and a half teaspoons of salt, and one and three quarters cups of a very warm water and a quarter cup of oil. The water has to be warm so that it can make the texture really easy to work with like this. No need to let it rise. You just cut it up into, I cut it into 16 pieces and then you're going to flatten it out really flat so that it looks like that. Set your stove to a medium heat and just place it on the pan directly, no oil needed. Flip it when it starts to bubble and then flip it over into a towel. You keep covering them as you make them. And as I would have it on the pan, I'd go over and roll out the next one so that it's easy. Like it was like a fun little system. Naturally, stuff them with cheese and make what you have to make. This. Bacon and cheese croquettes. Mm. This is just some cheddar cheese, some leftover mash, just spring onion. This is.
is like a golf ball size. I'm just using some panko breadcrumbs. Look at these. Today, I'm gonna be teaching you how to make fish en papillote, which is really just the fancy way of saying, in a bag. Start by cutting a sheet of parchment paper into the shape of a heart and lay it onto your workspace. We'll be using one half of the heart to lay out all of our ingredients. In addition to your fish, I'm using salmon, you'll need vegetables, seasoning, think things like garlic and fresh herbs, and then the most important part, uh, some sort of liquid for the fish to be able to steam. Uh, in this case, I used a little bit of lemon and these cherry tomatoes, which will produce liquid as they cooked. You could also use something like white wine. I love this method of cooking. Say au revoir to overcooked or dried out fish. This is gonna be delicious. Now for the technique. Start at the top of your heart by creating a fold. Overlap as you fold again and again. The goal is to totally seal the bag shut so the fish can steam. I bake mine at 355 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes. When the bag starts to puff up, you know it's working. Serve directly on the parchment. Today we're making Philly cheesesteak sandwiches. Start with a partially frozen ribeye and cut off strips, then take those strips and cut them into small little squares, just like that. Now dice up an onion. Now get a neutral oil down on the griddle, spread that around and get your onions sauteing until they're translucent. Then get your cheese whiz on there so it heats up and lowers the viscosity. Then get your onions into a bowl and get your ribeye down on the griddle. Make sure you're searing all sides of that steak. When it's about halfway done, add your onions back in, season it with a generous amount of salt. Now start prepping the buns. Cut them in half, load them up with cheese whiz. Only use about half your whiz here. Get your steak in two piles, put the buns down, get the lid on so it steams away, and there you have it. Now add the rest of your whiz on the top, Wrap this in parchment paper and these sandwiches steam away. They are so good. Full recipes on our YouTube channel, link in bio. Here's how to make a French onion grilled cheese sandwich. Melt a tablespoon of butter in a skillet over medium low heat. Then thinly slice half a white onion and add it to your skillet. Let your onions cook down, stirring occasionally. When they're translucent and really soft, add a couple tablespoons of whiskey. This adds a really yummy flavor to your caramelized onions. Let this cook down for a bit and then add a drizzle of balsamic glaze or balsamic vinegar. The extra sugar in this balsamic glaze will help it caramelize really nicely. Once they've reached this golden brown color, set them aside. Butter two pieces of sourdough bread and then add them to your skillet at medium low heat. Make sure you put the butter side down and then add some Gruyere cheese to both pieces of bread. Add all of your caramelized onions to one of the pieces of bread. Once the bread is golden brown, put the two pieces together and then bake your sandwich at 350 degrees Fahrenheit until the cheese is all melted. Remove your sandwich from the skillet, cut it in half, and enjoy. Lumpiang Shanghai, aka Filipino egg roll. Get your onion and grate it on this side. Ah, oh, my eyeballs are on fire! Ginger. Now we got Olaf's nose and savage cabbage. I use ground beef instead of pork, minced garlic, ground black pepper. One of the fastest ways to peel shrimp, you get the head and you count one, two, three, four, and you squeeze that tail off and boom, look how easy to take it off. Mince the shrimp and add it into your filling. Soy sauce. Mix your egg roll fillings. It has fillings? Put in a Ziploc bag or a piping bag if you have one. Cut the corner. Make sure you put a damp paper towel on top of the egg roll wrapper. Because if you don't, they'll dry up and they'll crack. Pipe it in, roll it up like a blunt. Add in your egg wash, which is egg and water. So it can stick on together like glue. Cut it into three pieces because they're appetizers. Lumpia is short for Lumpiang Shanghai. Fry it in the oil 350 degrees until it's golden brown. Look, I made an egg roll Jenga. Yeah, I got skills. Get your sweet chili sauce. Drizzle, drizzle. Yesterday I made some of the crunchiest potatoes and they were seriously some of the crispiest I've ever made and they were so delicious. I wanted to show you guys the recipe and how I did it and there's a secret technique to get it super super crispy. So first take your russet potato and peel the skin. We're not going to use it for this recipe. And then we're going to make sure that we have our rectangular shape so we're going to cut the edges off. I saved all my edges for another dish so there was no food waste here. Once you have your rectangular shape, we're gonna cut it lengthwise and we're gonna cut it into two smaller pieces just like this. For cutting the potato, we wanna do it halfway through the potato at a diagonal length and then flip it over and then do it at a horizontal length and it'll create this cool accordion. Next, I put it in the oil and I fried it. The key is having all these ridges gives it extra surface area so all the nooks and crannies get fried. 
My favorite thing to eat is a cruciferous vegetable mixed with Greek yogurt and then add some oats and then top it with cream cheese, which sounds gross, but it's what this carrot cake muffin is. So um, yeah, it's a lot, let's, uh, let's make it. First up, the flour of oats. Second up, the powder of baking, and then a little bit of salt. Then if you wanna get spicy, we're doing allspice, cloves, ginger, and cinnamon, but you can also just use cinnamon if that's all you have. Then one third cup Greek yogurt, one third cup maple syrup, one third cup shredded carrots, and one half cup of almond milk. Mix that all together and you can throw some raisins in there if you're feeling it, it's a, it's a lot of fiber, so prepare yourself. Then bake at 350 for 20 minutes, and if you wanna do icing, it's equal parts powdered sugar and cream cheese. And what's your favorite thing to eat? Because, Okay, stop what you're doing and make this low-carb alternative to Cheez-Its. Take a slice of cheese and cut into four even slices and add some holes with a straw for fun. On this goes to some parchment paper on a baking sheet with some sea salt. 275, 20, 25 minutes. Like, comment, and follow me for more. Let's make Cheesecake Factory's Buffalo Blast. Two cups of shredded chicken, one cup of cheese, and half a cup of hot buffalo sauce. Mix that together and place on your wonton wrap. Water the edges so it could stick better and then form into a triangle shape like this. Then I'm gonna dip it in my egg wash and seasoned breadcrumbs. Make sure you coat it very well and then fry on each side until golden. And that's it, enjoy. I can't stop eating these ever since I made them. They're so good. It just makes your dry and wet ingredients. It's super easy. And I added a little bit of salt and vanilla to enhance those other flavors. If you don't give these time to cool, they will fall apart. So make sure you remember that part. But I hope you try them, they are so good. All right, we're going real deal, dark roux, Cajun gumbo, start to finish. Step one, brown off your andouille sausage and set aside. And then take your chicken thighs that have been heavily seasoned with your favorite Cajun rub, brown both sides of those, and then set those aside. Now that you have a good fat base, you're going to add three quarter cup oil to that and one cup AP flour. Now you got to settle in and keep on stirring until your roux starts to look kind of like a rusty penny. Once it's right, throw your trinity in there to stop that cooking process. While those sweat, add your bay leaves, cayenne, salt, and that sausage. After a few minutes, you can slowly add your stock while mixing. Crank your heat and let simmer for an hour, then add that reserved chicken and go another 90 minutes. If you like filet, this is where you add it in, but I'm telling you, if you follow these directions, this will be the best gumbo you have ever made. 